the call to unite Catholics and Protestants to face a common enemy. Instead of focusing on their philosophical and historical differences, American Catholics and Protestants should unite to confront common enemies who jeopardize their religious freedom. The director and producer of a new film about the Cold War argues, The Divine Plan, which can be described as part documentary and part stage play, tells the story of the partnership between the Reagan White House and the Vatican under Pope John Paul II. The strong friendship that emerged between the Protestant president and the Catholic Pope figures prominently in the storytelling. Reagan drew from the Protestant faith of his mother, Nellie Reagan, but his father was Catholic, and Reagan maintained close associations with many prominent Catholics throughout his political career. These key figures include William Casey, Reagan's CIA director, William Clark, a longtime advisor to Reagan, Richard Allen, a national security advisor, and Vernon Walters, a retired army general who was Reagan's second ambassador to the United Nations. These individuals all played a role in fostering ties between the Reagan White House and the Vatican. Orlando said. He also points out that it was Reagan who restored full diplomatic ties with the Vatican for the first time in 117 years. The common enemy will end up being God's remnant church who stand upon the truth and expose the fallen churches of Babylon and sins of the world. The remnant who are keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, see Revelation 14 verse 12, these true saints of God are a constant rebuke to the fallen churches of Babylon and the world. Therefore, Satan is uniting the fallen churches to fight against God's people. Just like the papacy did during the Dark Ages. Persecution is coming, friends. Would you see Elijah proudly standing with the messengers of Baal, trying to find some common ground with them? Would you see Elijah participate in joint worship services offered to Jehovah, Moloch, Dagon, Marduk, Tammuz, Ashtoreth, and Baal? Not a chance. Elijah had a straight message from the Lord to give. Ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. 1 Kings 18 verse 18. Did you notice all the Catholics in high positions advising Ronald Reagan? Notice also the name of the film, The Divine Plan. Satan has deceived the churches into thinking that it is God's will and his plan for the Protestant churches to unite with the Roman Catholic Church for the common good of man. But Bible prophecy tells us that this isn't God's plan at all. It is not a divine plan to unite the churches with that mother of harlots. It is an evil plan with Satan as the mastermind behind it. What did the Protestant Reformation do? It stopped religious unity in its tracks. Religious unity had fractured with the survival and spread of Protestantism. The Protestant Reformation destroyed the concept of a world order sustained by the two swords of papacy and empire. And that was God's divine plan, not this ecumenical movement today. Revelation 17 verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That mother, as God foretold, is the Roman Catholic Church. And as we can see, she has harlot daughters so who could those daughters be? Naturally, it will be those churches who unite with the Roman Catholic Church. Since 1844, when the various churches rejected the first angel's message, they became part of fallen Babylon. 
and since then the churches have been sinking deeper and deeper into darkness until we now see them in open relationship with that mother of harlots which is an abomination to our holy god the mingling of church craft and state craft is represented by the iron and the clay see daniel 2 this union is weakening all the power of the churches this investing the church with the power of the state will bring evil results. Men have almost passed the point of God's forbearance. They have invested their strength in politics and have united with the papacy, but the time will come when God will punish those who have made void his law, and their evil work will recoil upon themselves. 2 Corinthians 6 verses 14 through 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Protestant churches are in great darkness, or they would discern the signs of the times. The Roman Catholic Church is far-reaching in her plans and modes of operation. She is employing every device to extend her influence and increase her power in preparation for a fierce and determined conflict to regain control of the world to re-establish persecution and to undo all that Protestantism has done. As the Protestant churches have been seeking the favor of the world, false charity has blinded their eyes. They do not see but that it is right to believe good of all evil, and as the inevitable result, they will finally believe evil of all good. Instead of standing in defense of the faith once delivered to the saints, they are now, as it were, apologizing to Rome for their uncharitable opinion of her, begging pardon for their bigotry. A prayerful study of the Bible would show Protestants the real character of the papacy and would cause them to abhor and to shun it. The message of being complete in Christ is going forth which will bring the final latter rain and loud cry. So Satan is bringing the fallen churches together to counter the latter rain and loud cry. And he will use signs and wonders to make the world think that God is behind this eukinism. Please don't be fooled, friends. Stand upon the truth of Christ and his righteousness. We do not need the churches. We only need Jesus Christ. Christ. God's people are a constant rebuke to these fallen churches of Babylon and therefore Satan is uniting the fallen churches to fight against God's people. How did John the Baptist die? It was the mother Herodias using the daughter to get the king to kill God's servant. And this is exactly what will happen in the last days. The Roman Catholic Church mother will get the fallen Protestant churches, her daughters, to seek the civil state, the king, to kill God's people. So we must have on the full armor of God to stand in the last days. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, 
and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Says Satan, our principal concern is to silence this sect of Sabbath keepers. We must excite popular indignation against them. We will enlist great men and worldly wise men upon our side and induce those in authority to carry out our purposes. Then the Sabbath which I have set up shall be enforced by laws, the most severe and exacting. Those who disregard them shall be driven out from the cities and villages and made to suffer hunger and privation. When once we have the power, we will show what we can do with those who will not swerve from their allegiance to God. We led the Romish church to inflict imprisonment, torture, and death upon those who refused to yield to her decrees. And now that we are bringing the Protestant churches and the world into harmony with this right arm of our strength, we will finally have a law to exterminate all who will not submit to our authority. When death shall be made the penalty of violating our Sabbath, then many who are now ranked with commandment keepers will come over to our side. I pray you were blessed by this message. Please check out our pages. We are complete in Christ and Christ and his righteousness. God bless. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The Catholic Church says, No, by my divine power I abolished the Sabbath day and command you to keep the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. From the birth of popery to the present time, it is estimated by careful and credible historians that more than 50 millions of the human family have been slaughtered for the crime of heresy by popish persecutors, an average of more than 40,000 religious murders for every year of the existence of popery to the present day. The Church of Rome has shed more innocent blood than any other institution that has ever existed among mankind will be questioned by no Protestant who has a competent knowledge of history. It is impossible to form a complete conception of the multitude of her victims, and it is quite certain that no powers of imagination can adequately realize their sufferings. Council Moscow 1503 The accused Sabbath keepers were summoned. They openly acknowledged the new faith and defended the same. The most prominent of them were condemned to death and burned publicly in cages at Moscow, December 17, 1503. This organization proposes in every possible way to aid in preserving Sunday as a civil institution. Our national security requires the active support of all good citizens in the maintenance of our American Sabbath. Sunday laws must be enforced. Thank you for watching. I pray this message has opened your eyes. Please make sure to read the links in the description and check out these amazing Bible truth videos. For more amazing Bible truth slash Bible studies, go to end-times-prophecy.org. The links will be in the description below. God bless.